Hi, this is Dennis, and today I'm going to make a New York style sweet potato cheesecake on a graham cracker crust. I've got the ingredients listed below, so get yours and follow along. So what I'm about to do now is rinse off the potatoes. You want to make sure that you clean the potatoes and take any uh, just little sticky things off of them like this. Once I rinse off the potatoes, I'm going to put them in the oven at 425 for about one hour. You want to bake the potatoes until you can stick a fork through them and they're soft and they're all the way done at that point. So now I'm just going to rinse off the potatoes. Pat them dry a little bit. I like to roast the potatoes because I think that it gives it more flavor. Um, you can roast them or you can boil them. Either, either way you want to cook the potatoes just to get them cooked. Uh, I like to roast them. Brings out the true potato flavor. All right. Now I've got the potatoes. I'm going to go ahead and put them in the oven. I'm going to put them on a sheet of uh, aluminum foil as you can see it's already set up. So I'm just going to leave them there for an hour, hour and a half, and then I'm going to continue cooking. Now for the crust, we're going to need some graham crackers. I'm going to crush up some graham crackers right here. I have to put them in the bag. Uh, at the end of the day, you'll need about one and one-fourth cups of graham crackers. All I'm doing is putting the graham crackers in a, a Ziploc bag, and I'm going to crush them up. Have a rolling pin. You can use a mallet, whatever you got. So I'm just going to crush up the crackers. Okay, we're going to start with the crust, the graham cracker crust. As you can see, I've crushed some graham crackers. I've crushed a one and one fourth cup of graham crackers. Put those in the bowl. I also have the sugar and melted butter. I'm going to mix these up together. And as you're mixing, you're going to be able to tell that this is turning into that the butter and the graham crackers and the sugar is all coming together and it's going to be something that's that you can form as you see it's you know a little crusty here so i'm going to keep on stir this really good smells real good next I'm going to spray my spring form pan, spring form pan because it springs just for cheesecakes. It sprays it with some olive oil or non spray. And then I'm going to pour my mixture into my pan and press it in there. You want to press it in there real good and even it all around. When you're, when you're, Making the, the cheesecake, you kind of want to have the, the cheesecake come a little bit, a little bit up the edge of the spring form pan because that's going to give like the filling something to, to be a part of. So I'm going to squeeze a little bit of it all the way around. It doesn't have to be perfect. But you want to pack this in here as much as you can. You want to keep it tight. Could use a cup or something flat to help you pack it in. I like working with my hands. I like to touch the food. I always keep it washed up. Smells really good. The butter and the graham crackers and sugar. Alright, once you got that compacted down into the, the spring form pan really good, you're going to have the oven preheated at 350 degrees. And what you're going to do is you're going to put this in there for 
for seven minutes. And once you take it out, let it cool. You want to let it cool completely. Now I'm about to put this in the oven for seven minutes and then we're going to come back and make the filling. Okay, now I have the sweet potatoes. The sweet potatoes have been cooked for about an hour and uh, now they're real soft. What I did to show that they're soft, I put a fork through them. Once you can put a fork through them, they're cooked thoroughly. Right now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna peel the sweet potatoes and put them in here. I've let them cool after taking them out and it's pretty easy. Once you, you let the sweet potatoes cool, you know, once you cook them and let them cool, the skin really comes off real easy. So you can just peel the skin off. And I'm just going to put these into the blender. They're still a little bit warm, but like I said, I've let them cool down for about 15, 20 minutes because I you know, don't want to burn my hand. <laughs> If you don't have a blender, you can use like a hand blender or uh, something that that nature. The goal is just to really get the sweet potatoes in a real liquid parade form. One more. At the end of the day, we're going to need two two cups of sweet potatoes. Rinse off my hands a little bit. Now I'm going to. And let it blend. You want this to be a puree, so you want it to be a liquid. It's still gonna be uh, uh, not not soupy, like watery, but it's gonna be a liquid. It's gonna be kind of um, pureed. Now, as I'm blending, I'm gonna take some some time, stop, and maybe push down the sweet potatoes in there to make sure that they are, are all fully getting blended. You don't necessarily have to keep doing this, and depending on the type of blender you have, you may not nearly need to do it at all. They're real soft, so they will blend easily. I'm gonna stop one more time and push the sweet potatoes down. You you don't want any chunks or anything in the sweet potatoes. The, you will mix it again once you once you put it into the the cream cheese filling sauce. But you just want to add it in and make sure there's no chunks. Smooth consistency. That should do it. Now our sweet potatoes, they're, uh, they're a good consistency. See, they're not runny. They are uh, not solid. There's no chunks. And now we're ready to go. Okay, now I'm about to make the filling. This is gonna be a two part process. First in one bowl, I'm gonna put the cream cheese, the vanilla, the spices, which are listed below, and the sugar. And I'm gonna cream that together until it's smooth. And then in the second bowl, I'm gonna put the sweet potatoes that I showed you guys how to pray earlier, the condensed milk, as well as the sour cream. Once I have these two smooth, I'm going to incorporate the sour cream and the sweet potato mixture into the cream cheese, and then I'm going to add an egg one at a time, three eggs. Here we go. First, get the cream cheese. The cream cheese is room temperature. The reason that you want the cream cheese also is the eggs to be room temperature is because you want them soft and malleable. You want them to be easy to work with. Even though the cream cheese might be easy. Not the packaging. I'll just dump all three of these in there. And I'm going to stir everything in there. So I'm going to put the vanilla spices, which is cinnamon, nutmeg, and a little bit of salt, and the sugar. 
So I'm gonna put all these in here and I'm gonna cream them together. Ooh, that's working together real good. You wanna be, we wanna kinda of be careful now. You don't wanna over mix your cream cheese because cheesecake is a dense dessert. So you got, you don't wanna to get too many air bubbles in it. But you do wanna cream it together, together smooth. You want it well stirred. Okay, I'm still mixing this cream together. As you can see, it is, it is coming together really well. So I'm gonna stop doing that. I'm gonna work on my other mixture. So my other mixture, I'm gonna have my sweet potatoes. Sour cream. Trying to get all that sour cream in there. And condensed milk. Sweet and condensed milk. Okay, now I'm gonna mix these together. They're real smooth. You know, when you're mixing either, either the cream mixture, the uh, Philadelphia cream cheese mixture, or you're mixing this together, you don't want to get a lot of air bubbles in there. So I'm mixing it together real smooth. As you can see, it's coming together good. There shouldn't be any lumps in there. It's looking real good. Okay. This is a real good consistency. As you can see, it's real smooth. So now I'm about to mix this in with the cream cheese. Now, if you have a blender at home, you may want to use a blender. I'm doing everything by hand, but, you know, if you have a blender, you may want to do it with a blender. And okay, now I have the sweet potatoes inside of the cream cheese, and I'm going to mix them both together really well. Now, I want to mix them together until it's integrated, so I don't want to... You know, just keep mixing and getting a lot of air, air bubbles in there. I want to mix it together. It, look at this. It's, it's getting real smooth. The texture is real creamy. This is going to turn out really good. So mixing it together. Now, I'm going to add three eggs, one at a time. I'm going to add the egg and then mix it up to integrate it. And then I'm going to add another. Try not to get any eggshells in there. Now I got egg. Oops. Sometimes it happens even to the best of us. So I'm mixing in this egg. It's gone, so I'm going to go on to the next egg. One at a time. I'm going to just smooth this egg on in here. Until it's well integrated. Now you want to you want to try and keep it keep keep as little stirring as possible. Last egg. I'm gonna mix that in. Smells really good already. Now I've already got the oven preheated at 350 degrees from the crust. The crust has been sitting and cooling for a little while. You just want it in there about seven, seven to 10 minutes so that it can, you know, get a little um, baked. Then you have to let it cool 
completely. You don't want to put this cheese mixture into a hot crust. You want to allow the crust to cool completely. So now I've added the egg. The next step is to put this into our cooled crust. Here's our crust. Here's our mixture. So I'm just going to pour this in to the crust. That's cooking real good. Try and get all that cream in there. Now with cream cheese, especially New York style cream cheese in the baking process, it can crack. So in order to, to stop it crack, that's why it's so important not to have bubbles in there. And in order to keep it from cracking, two things we're gonna do, we're gonna kind of tap this a little bit and wiggle it a little bit so that we can get the air bubbles out. You might even see a few air bubbles come to the surface. And then we're going to wrap the bottom with aluminum foil. The reason is, when we put this into the pan, we're gonna put the pan in the oven and then we're gonna add some boiling water. You see behind me, I've got some water boiling and we're gonna add some boiling water to the, to the pan. I'm gonna put the aluminum foil around it so that, it, that the water doesn't have a chance to get into the mixture. Try and get it real good wrapped up there. And when, you, when you're adding water to the pan, you're only going to want to add it about halfway up. It's going to help with that process. Now I'll put this into the pan. I'm going to put the pan into the oven. Now I'm going to take my boiling water and I'm going to pour it into the pan. I want to pour slowly so it doesn't splash or anything like that. Come up about halfway and that'll help prevent cracking. So I've got my water in there, I've got my cake, my cheesecake in there. I'm gonna put this into the middle of the rack and I'm gonna bake that on 350 degrees for about an hour. It may need an hour to an hour and 30 minutes. The goal is to get the internal temperature to about 150 degrees. Once I get this to an internal temperature of 150 degrees, I'm gonna turn off the oven and crack the door. That way I can allow it to cool down slowly. That's the goal, so I'll see you again in, in an hour and we're gonna check on this cheesecake. For the cheesecake, I'm gonna make this topping. The topping has some maple syrup as well as some heavy whipping cream. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put these into the medium pot. I'm gonna start boiling and I'm gonna stir regularly. You wanna stir until it thickens up. Once it thickens up, it, should, it may take about 15 minutes with some regular stirring. You're gonna to wanna to let it cool to room temperature. So, let's get started. First, I'm gonna add the maple syrup. Next, the heavy whipping cream. As we can see, this is coming into a bowl. I'm going to turn it down. You don't have to have it fully, fully heated. I'm going to turn it down so it doesn't bubble up. But you want to continually, you want to regularly stir it. Uh, it's not thickening up yet, but it will shortly. Right now, I have it on about medium heat. 
because we've been doing this about 15 minutes. I've been stirring regularly. Uh, it started to thicken up a little bit. The ultimate and the complete thickening process will happen as it cools. So I'm going to turn off the heat and I'm going to remove it totally from the heat and I am going to let it cool at room temperature. So it's been an hour and I'm going to check on the cheesecake. I'm going to use a thermometer. I have a digital thermometer. Now I'm going to stick it into the center of the cheesecake. Also, just note that the cheesecake may be unsettled in the center and that's fine. The process, even though we turn off the oven when we finish cooking it and it gets to 150 degrees, it, it continues to cook afterwards even though it's uh, in, in the kind of cool down process. That cheesecake looked really good. So I'm just going to stick this into the center. So yep, this has gotten to 150 degrees. So I'm going to turn off the oven. And I'm going to leave the cheesecake in, but I'm going to let the door stay cracked. You want to let the hot air kind of escape. But then you also want to let the door stay cracked, you know, when you when you put it back in there, leave the door ajar. That way it can start cooling down. So we're going to leave it, we're going to allow it to cool down for an hour in here. And then we're going to take it out and let it fully cool down. And once it comes down to room temperature, you want to put it in the fridge overnight. And then you'll have your cheesecake. So I'm just taking the sweet potato cheesecake out of the oven. I allowed it to cool in the oven with the door cracked for an hour. Now that I've taken it out, I'm allowed to cool uh, till it gets about room temperature, which should take a couple of hours. Once that's done, I'm going to put it in the fridge. So I'll see you in another couple of hours. So I've allowed the cheesecake to sit for a few hours. Now it's completely at room temperature. So I'm going to cover it with aluminum foil. And I'm going to put it in the fridge. You want to put it in the fridge for six to 12 hours at best overnight because that's gonna allow it to solidify and it'll be completely through with the process. I've allowed the cheesecake to sit in the refrigerator overnight. As you can see, a little bit of sweat got on the cheesecake from the sweet potatoes. That's okay. I'm gonna take a paper towel and I'm gonna dab that sweat off. Now that I've gotten the sweat off, I'm gonna unhook the cheesecake from the springform pan Carefully, you don't want it to necessarily stick to the sides. Now you can see that the cheesecake is here. Look at that. That looks really good. Now we're ready to add the topping. Once we add the topping, it'll be ready to slice and serve. If you're looking for a special touch, look in the link below and find the recipe for my homemade whipped cream. I've added the topping as well as some homemade whipped cream. Now we're ready to eat. If you like this recipe and you want to see more, subscribe to my channel. As well, if you have any desserts that you'd like me to make, just put them in the comments below. Thanks for watching this video, and I'll see you next time.